Hello, artists. Welcome back to Art Life Conversations podcast. I'm Kelly Folsom. I am your host. I am a full-time artist, have been a full-time artist since 2011. I am a teacher. I'm a coach. I'm a mentor for artists. And my aim and vision is to help women artists become so much more successful, thriving, and finding more confidence and stability in their art life and in their art business and finding their artistic voice. So if you are an artist that wants those things for yourself and are struggling to do that on your own, then I am here for you. I am here for your support and I hope that this podcast um, is of service to all of you. Um, So today I'm going to be talking about how to sell more art online if you are just getting started. So if you are a beginner, okay? Um, So if you are wanting to do that, then stick around because I'm going to be sharing with you um, the top six things that I have learned (laughs) over the last Uh, well, since 2011, about selling art online, the problems that uh, I faced myself and I see other artists face, and also the solutions and tips and techniques that you can use in order to begin to start selling more art online. So the first problem that um, I know I myself had and I see other artists have, and that is just a belief, a belief that you can sell art online. Um, Now, obviously, back in 2011, whenever I first graduated art school, um, the primary way that I knew of that artists sold art was via um, in-person shows, via in-person galleries. And of course, those are still very viable revenue streams for artists um, as well to this day. However, a lot of artists, myself included back then, really thought that, you know, I would always hear this uh, statement of like, oh, collectors aren't looking for art online, people aren't buying art online, that's something that you have to buy in person, that you have to see in person. Um, and so a lot of artists were avoiding, you know, promoting themselves online, avoid- avoiding trying to sell their art online. And so first and foremost, it's just, and of course that is, gosh, selling art online now, we know right now is over an $8 billion a year industry, um, just in, you know, US, you know, US dollars, um, $8 billion right now plus of online art sales, okay? And every year, Um, this continues to go up and up and up. So the percentage of art that's being sold online um, continues to increase year after year after year. Um, So it's just not true that you can't sell art online, and I can attest to that. You know, last year alone, I sold $75,000 worth of art only online, and same thing for the year prior to that. Um, And so I know for a fact that that's just not true, that as an artist, you can uh, sell your art online, you can learn how to do that, you can build an online um, clientele base that will buy your work from you online. So that's the, the number one thing is that you just have to shift your perspective, shift your thinking in that regard, and know for a fact that it is possible uh, for you as well to sell your work online. And I think these days, um, I think artists who just discount online, well, basically they're just missing out on a whole other revenue stream. Um, and they're, you know, artists who refuse to try to build a clientele base and sell online, they're just missing out on extra income, which I think is a little bit silly. <laughs> but, anyways, but that's my opinion. So, Okay, number two, this is the number two problem that I see, and that is especially for people just getting started, um, who wanna get started, and the number two problem I see is like, um, and I know I felt it too, is just overwhelm. Um, Overwhelm, don't know where to start, don't know how to get started, um, don't, there's so many options, like do I start, do I, start on Facebook, Etsy, Instagram, TikTok, you know, 
um, you know, where do Pinterest, you know, um, just overwhelm in turn or eBay, you know, all these, all these options. So a lot of times whenever we go into overwhelm, you know, our brain, of course, will just shut down to uh, possibilities because we're finding it difficult to make a decision. So you really just want to pick one place online that you can get started, whether that's on social media, whether that's through something like, you know, Fine Art America, Saatchi Art, Etsy, eBay, something like that. You just want to make a decision. You want to pick a platform, right, that you are going to commit to learning about um, and to um, trying to sell your art through that platform. I would recommend that you only pick one place to get started because whenever you pick too many options all at once, it does get very overwhelming. So for me, what I did is I just picked the place back then that I was hanging out myself the most. And, and back then it was on Facebook. So that's where I got started selling my art online was on Facebook first. And um, it was really just because that was the platform that I was familiar with, that I knew how to use. I was already a part of like Facebook groups and art groups, um, things of that nature, you know. So that's a number, the number two thing um, that you're going to want to do is just make a decision, avoid all that overwhelm. <laughs> you know, now if you pick a platform, I would say, you know, commit to that for at least six months to a year. Commit to that platform and seeing it through um, and really learning about it. And that, that goes into the number three issue that I see happening. And that is once, once um, sometimes when artists pick a platform, sometimes the tendency is to just go, okay, I posted my painting, um, you know, and nothing happened, you know. Um, and so I call this kind of like the pasta technique, you know, just like throwing a bunch of pasta at the wall and seeing if anything sticks. And then whenever, whenever nothing does stick, because you're really not trying that hard, you know, you're really not trying to learn about that platform um, and how it works best. Um, you know, again, what I see happen a lot is that then people go, see, that didn't work. But really they're just, you know, it's like confirmation bias, like really they're just trying to prove their belief correct that it's not going to work for them. And it's really just because they're either afraid of putting in the time and effort or they just don't want to do it, you know. Um, so you do have to be committed, you know, to whatever option you choose and you have to be 100% all in on it, taking the good with the bad, taking your lumps, you know, so to speak, uh, going through that learning curve, you know, for example, like if you're on Instagram, learning, you know, what's working on Instagram right now, um, you know, you find out, oh, reels are really good right now on Instagram. Okay, I need to learn how to do reels. And then you study your you study your results, right? You you not just throw a bunch of pasta at the wall and hope something sticks. You do the action, then you analyze and learn, you know, from the action, you see how it performed, you see what kind of feedback you got, you see what kind of response you got, and then you um, iterate on that, right? Then you try to improve on that, you try to optimize that, you know, um, no matter what platform you choose, you're going to have to do this. This is just part of the work online. It is not going to come easy, you know, for any of us. It certainly did not come super easy for me. I had to learn as well, you know. But then once you start to really get some momentum going, let's say on one platform, then you can um, expand out um, perhaps into another platform if you so wish um, and try to perhaps capture a different um, audience. Okay. The next problem that I see is just um, no prices, no pricing. Um, this is either on your website, you know, or on your posts themselves if you're posting on social media. It's interesting because obviously if you're posting your work to say a, a selling site like Etsy, eBay, um, you know, uh, there's a site called Daily Paintworks or Fine Art America or Saatchi, you know, 
it's I find it so fascinating that artists will post there and they're more than happy of course to put in their pricing because it's required you know to to sell through those platforms but it, I find it interesting I know myself included I was told way back when you know 15 years ago oh don't put prices on your website you know that's a bad that's going to make you look like you're a low tier artist and it never made sense to me I thought why you know doesn't somebody need to know how much my painting costs? You know, wouldn't that be a good thing? Wouldn't that weed people out who think my paintings are too cheap or weed people out who think my paintings are too expensive? Like, wouldn't that help me, you know, attract my ideal client if I have prices? And also, you know, there's so many, um, there's such a mix of artists online these days from, you know, people who would call themselves dilettantes, for example, or hobby artists. Um, and so it's kind of hard to tell nowadays who's doing art and making a living from their art and who's doing art just for themselves and they're really just making art for themselves and they're not interested in selling their art. So you're actually really doing your customer and your audience a favor by putting the price and yourself a favor <laughs> by putting the price on your painting. Um, this will um, automatically just by itself let people know that you are selling your work, um, that your work is available for sale, okay? So please don't post paintings um, that are, uh, that don't have pricing. And if you have sold paintings, you can also post paintings and put sold on it. And that's another indicator to people that you do sell your work. Um, so the whole point of like marketing your artwork online is like you're trying to attract, you know, your people, you're trying to attract your collectors and your buyers. And, um, and in order for them to be, you know, basically validated as a collector and buyer, they, they need to, you know, see the price and go check out your work and, and hopefully buy one of your pieces. All right. So please, please, please put prices on your artwork. And if it's sold, put sold next to it so that people know that you are um, selling your artwork and that you're making a living from this. This is a business for you. Okay, the next problem is no call to actions. So you'll kind of see this a lot in marketing what, what, where they will say, put a CTA um, you know, at the end of your email, at the end of your post. And so a call to action can be as simple as, you know, go to my link in bio if you're on Instagram um, to shop this collection or um, go to my website here or join my email list here, um, check out more of my work here, buy this painting by doing X, Y, Z, DMing me, messaging me, um, you know, you need to tell your buyer what to do. And so this is called a call to action or you, I refer to it as asking for the sale. Um, you're asking them to do something, okay? And if they are interested, they will do that thing. They will email you, they will message you, you know. Um, and also, it can also be like if you're just, um, you know, marketing in order to, um, you know, it could also be asking people to comment, for example, like if you're on Facebook or here on the podcast, at the end of every podcast, I'm asking you to subscribe, to like the channel, to comment, leave me a comment below, or email in if you have a question, you know, this is a call to action. Okay, so that is the other problem that I see is sometimes people will just put a price up, but then they don't have a call to action inviting their um, customer to do something next. Um, and finally, the last problem that I see um, and have experienced myself is perhaps doing a lot of promoting and a lot of marketing, say on social media or, um, you know, something like that, but not capturing emails. Um, so if you want to start selling more art online, um, you need to get people's email addresses. Um, you want to get them on your email list because this is where you can have more personal direct communication with them 
And believe it or not, more people check their email more than they do check social media um, and things of that nature. So you will be in their inbox. You will be able to stay up to date with them um, in a more personal way, letting them know like, hey, I'm working on this series right now, or this is a painting that's fresh off the easel. Um, and you'll be able to have more of a conversation and build more of a connection with them on email, believe it or not, more so than just on a social media post. Um, and also just the frequency in which people check their email is more frequent than um, checking social media. And you never know when that person's gonna be on social media and also how many people are they following? You know, they might be following thousands of people. And so you email is a better way to get the most interested people, let's say if you're promoting on social media, um, get the people who are most interested onto your email list. So make sure that you do that last step that you are, and perhaps that is your call to action. You're inviting them to join your email list to learn more about you as an artist, learn more about your work, and see you know, see perhaps the most up-to-date, newest works that you've created. Maybe they get uh, first dibs on new paintings. Maybe they get special deals or special discounts on your paintings by being on your email list. So that's my last tip for you today. If you are a newbie and you want to start selling more art online, make sure that you do these six things. Okay, my friends, I hope that this has been of value to you and of service to you. Um, as always, leave me a comment below. You can email in if you have a topic you want me to cover at info at artlifewithkelly, K-E-L-L-I, dot com. And of course, you can visit my website, my, my um, teaching website, which is artlifewithkelly.com. All right, my friends, wishing you all a thriving, thriving art life in every single regard. Are wishing you so much joy, fulfillment, and success with your art, and I will talk to you next week. Happy painting. Bye.